So we're going to run the spooler. All right, it's connected. And up here, it's 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 uh, downloading the parameters into the control box. You have to just wait until it says ready. All right. Now I'm going to go back to the USB connection diagram. Now in this setup menu, we've got USB connect. Okay, so let's say, I'm going to close the program. Let's say the USB was not connected and you ran the program to load. Over here, it's saying cannot connect. Okay, This is the USB connection dialog that connects to the USB cable uh, controller first and then closes and then here is the star CNC uh, control screen for the machine. So we've got a down arrow here. Now if, if you this this is the it needs everything you need to do to connect on the USB so we're going to do a close USB what that means is stop talking to USB ports and then when I did that, this icon called Scan Ports pops up. So I'm going to plug in the cable. I'm plugging in the cable right here. And then I'm going to do Scan Ports. So COM6 pops up. So I'll click on COM6. And um, you can see down here there's a couple checkboxes. Auto Scan on Start. It looks for ports. Use last port. Use last port. So if this one's checked, the next time it loads, it will try the same port number. Uh, they come up as a COM port, and depending on which port you've connected to your computer, it might say COM three, COM four, COM five, something like that. So you can do close USB, and I'm going to unplug the cable again. I'll do scan ports. Right now the cable is unplugged, and it doesn't find any. Okay. Now, I'll do close USB again. I'm going to plug in the cable again. Plugging the cable in now. And um, I will do scan ports. And I found COM6 again. Now, if the controller was turned off, the, the, the uh, power of the controller was turned off, the USB is still connected because the USB is powered by the computer. The USB section of the control board is powered by the computer. So if I do a, a connect, it says check controller is turned off. So the controller board in the machine, in the control box, is a two-part board. It has a USB front end that is powered by your computer and then the the main part of the control board is powered by the controller, the controller power, and um, the fan is actually taken off the controller power. So if your fan is running, your fan isn't running, the controller probably isn't working. But anyway, that's in diagnosing. But so we'll turn the controller on, and I'll just do check USB or connect USB again. And now it connects. And now it's going to download the parameters here. It says wait. It downloads a acceleration table and a few other tables into the controller. Now it's ready to go. Okay, so you can jog the machine around. So here we're going to jog the machine. So, <clears throat> X plus, X minus, that's X plus. So, X minus should move your machine to the left, X plus to the right, Y minus moves it towards you, and Y plus moves it away from you. Z minus drops her down, Z plus raises it up.
spindle one, spindle up here is how you start the spindle. Spindle is also automatically started by the software. At the at your file, your, your file will start the program either either if it's in uh, G code mode or running from Star C Star Cam. On the screen here, you have you can set the feed rate of the machine by changing it here. Only you have to do this though before it starts cutting. There is a feed rate override here, which allows you to slow the machine down while it's cutting. It, 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 at the very next vector, the effect changes. You can go a little bit faster, but you can go a lot slower. Okay. Now, if your machine had a high-frequency spindle, then you could change the RPM here on by this this um, up and down arrow right there, but. It, if it doesn't, you can't change the RPM. You have to actually change it on the router itself, the dial. So let's say you want to, we do want to do a quick test of the machine. Um, we're going to draw something in the program that comes with it called StarCam. And StarCam is just an ex a program I supply with the machine. It's not meant to replace MasterCam or anything. It's just a basic layout program that allows you to import objects and display them on the screen, make simple changes to them, change the cut order, and uh, set your depths. Set depths. So, let's say we bring in, um, well, first of all, we can draw some stuff. So, I'm just going to draw a box. Draw a box. Now, before I do that, I'm just going to... Now, the, here's the screen. You can, you, you can I'm left, right-clicking on the mouse and dragging. If you right-click, you get a menu with the mouse. You get a zoom menu. Okay. If you scroll your mouse wheel in and out, you can change the zoom. Down here is the coordinates of where your cursor is. So this is the origin line. So that's the x0 and y0. As you'll see, as, as I uh, put the mouse closer to that, it goes closer to 0 down here. Um, First of all, we'll just simply draw a box, and we'll just draw it. The cord will start about minus. Uh, we'll draw a box about this size here. Okay. Now, um, here's the layer menu here. Layers. So that object is on layer one. It's a red object, and we're going to here. We've already set the depth. I'm going to set the depth to minus point one five. Okay, one five inches. Okay. And uh, that's as simple as it is to uh, create a, a simple object to cut. Close. Okay, so I've set the depth of that object to, it has to be actually negative. I forgot to put the negative. Negative 1.5. Okay, the depths all have to be negative. Close. Now to cut that to the machine, all I have to do is select it, bring up toolpath, no, a route, route selected, and up comes the output box and it create it creates a temp file and then the the star CNC so I created a temp file and that's it's like a G code file but it's a uh, it's more of a hidden file or a, a compressed G code file and uh, and I'm just gonna click done now if I go over to the spooler I can go file open spool file because this creates a, the same file name every time. It's called a spooler file. And the file is always called temp0.lks. So I go open. All right. So first of all, let's say we put a piece of work on the machine here. Um, first of all, we're just going to cut in the air. So. Now, I'm going to, let's say we jump, pretend that we're going to cut here, and we're going to, we want the center of the piece, like the origin over here, we want the center of the piece, let's say, to be right there, okay? Now, you see these numbers are random, they're like, it hasn't been set yet, so to set the machine to 0, 0, we'll go over here, set X, Y position, and we'll go, there, it comes in as 0, 0, we'll say, okay. And see, these numbers just change to 0, 0. 
And let's say the top of the work. Now we're going to jog. Now I, in the middle here, there's a slow and a fast and a one step mode. So we'll go slow and you can jog down really slow. Here's the feed rate it's doing down in the corner, by the way. And then we're going to go down a little bit. Okay, so we're going to go, let's say that's the top of the work. We're going to go set Z, set Z position to zero. And see it says two point, minus 299. When I click set Z position, it, dro it goes to zero. Okay, so all you have to do now, she's ready to go. Raise the router up and go run. <laughs> And it's cutting at 30, okay, she is cutting at, um, the feed rate is set to 37, now this is in percentage, this is in an inch per minute, and you'll see that here it says 37, well down here it says 37, now if I was to change the feed rate, feed rate override, it would, it would change that number. So it just ran the, the box. And we're going to speed it up here a bit. We're going to run the box. We'll run it about 50% or 55% or something like that. Okay, so we're going to run it again. Now, it's as simple as running, hit running. Are there it goes again. So this is uh, just a basic setup. We haven't, um, ju just a basic test at the start of the setup. So doing here. Now, when, when you first start uh, or setting up your machine, you have to make sure that it's configured properly, configured to uh, the right scale factors and um, the machine, when you tell the machine to move an inch, it moves an inch, it doesn't move two inches. So, so we build a number of models of machine and each one uses a different configuration file. So to load your, make sure you've got the right one. Go to setup, configure machine, and up in the top bar here you'll see the current machine configuration that um, the machine is using. Now the um, in the in the config in the uh, config menu here, you've got a bunch of tabs. You've got you've got tabs for the scale factor of the for the lead screws to make sure the machine cuts the right size. You've got jog settings. Over here, you've got contouring settings. You've got your z z axis uh, velocity plunge rates and um, the default amount it raises the cutter to move over. Uh, when it raises, uh, tool above work is how much it lifts to move over and drops down for the next move. You've got tool change, prompt for tool change, uh, no tool change or prompt when it sees a tool change. But anyway, there's a lot of settings here you can change uh, that are set to make the machine work right. Normally, you wouldn't have to touch these. Possibly changing your jog speed is uh, something you can change. Okay, but so the. If you go, they're, they're all pre-made configuration files. So if you go up here to File, and you go Open Machine Configuration, you'll see here, uh, this machine here is a 15 by 15. So there's a few different flavors of 15 15, depending on the lead screws that came with it. Now, if we pick this one, oh, and Open, You'll see under the rapid and scale, the scale factor is four, four, and four. But on this machine, it has three thread per inch lead screws, so this isn't the right one. Anyway, you can try. Uh, if you need to know which configuration file you need, just call uh, us at Larkin, and I'll, we'll set you right. We'll tell you which one you you need. Uh, but um, the con the uh, the scale factor, like. That one's 4, 4, and 4, but that's for the X scale, the Y scale, and the Z scale. And uh, the scale factor is calculated by the, the number of threads per inch on the screw times 
the number of steps it takes to make one turn of the screw. So I'm going to open the right one. Here it is here, Cam 15.3 for this machine. And the scale factor is 2.4 in the X, 2.4 in the Y, and 4 in the Z. And uh, the reason it's 2.4 is because the machine has three threads per inch on the lead screw for the X screw. And the stepper turns 800 steps per turn, so you have 800 times 3 to move it an inch, which is 2400. And the step, the, the scale factor, is the, the number of steps it takes to move one thousandth of an inch. So it takes 2.4 steps to move one thousandth of an inch. And that is because the, 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 the screw takes three turns to move it an inch, it's three thread per inch, and each turn is 800 steps per turn on the stepper drive. That's called quarter stepping. So 800 times 3 is 2400 steps per inch or 2.4 steps per thousandth of an inch. And uh, so when you get the right configuration file in your machine, you need to set it as default so that the next time the software loads up, it loads this one. It loads the, the one you're by setting it as default. Okay. Now, the machine, the configuration is all the parameters required to run the machine and the whole, if you change it to metric, you need to change the scale factors to be, uh, let's say if you went to metric, it would be the number of steps it takes to move 0 0.01 millimeters. So these numbers would be different, but there are mostly pre-made um, configurations like there's cam 24 inch, cam 24 metric millimeter, uh, cam 24 closed loop servo SV, uh, so there's there's a whole bunch but if you're not sure just call us at Larkin and uh, we'll tell you which one to load so that's important to set your configuration file up right or your machine won't cut the right size but the machine will run it'll run with pretty much any of the configuration files but it just won't run the right size so you can you can change that after you've basically got the machine up and moving and stuff. It's not a critical thing, but before you cut anything, you'll need to uh, you'll need to change the configuration file or make sure it is at least right. Okay, and if you make any changes, like when you're jogging the machine, you can uh, change the jog speed here for the ones you want. Like here, it's slow. It's 15%. Fast, it's 70%. Uh, don't go too high though because stepper motors tend to jam if you drive them too fast. All right. Now we could restart the program to make sure uh, all the settings, but uh, or, or uh, we could reset the controller. Actually, you can go up here, configure machine, and down here is reset. Pick because it's a pick based controller. It's using a microchip pick processor on the controller board. It's using two of them actually. There's actually five microchip processors in the control box one for each stepper drive and two on the board, control board. Okay, so then it's reset the drive. Well, I reset the downloaded new parameters into the controller and it's ready to go with the new controller. Okay. Now, here you'll see my fast jog speed seems to be about 70, and the slow jog speed here is really slow. It's only 3. Now, it's easy to change that. You go up here to Setup, Configure Machine. Uh, under the Rapid and Scale tab right here, we have Jog Speed, Slow and Fast. So let's say we want to say change that to 15, which is a fairly decent jog, uh, slow jog speed. I'm going to hit, uh, after I change it, I'm going to hit save config and then OK. So now on the slow jog, we're jogging at 15, which is a good, a good speed for touching down slowly. And you can see down here on, right here, that displays the current velocity. So if I change that to there, that's 70%. Now, the machine isn't running currently 
it's running on a percentage. It's a 1 to 100 percent of the machine speed. It's not calibrated in inches per minute. In the future, I hope to uh, make it run in inches, uh, display inches per minute, because is it's not like it's inches per minute is always calculated down into motor steps per second. So it's basically just a way of displaying it. Okay, so now let's say let's say we were jogging the machine. One thing that happens very often with new new users is they jog the machine and they jog it into the end. Oh my god, it hit the end. Oh god. It won't move. It won't move. Oh my god. Nothing moves. And the reason is because if you see down here in the bottom, right here, it's displaying an X. That means the X limit switch up here has hit the is tripped and it won't untrip. So the machine can't move right now. But very simple, go up here to function, click on limit switch disable, and now you see there's a check mark there. And you can jog it off the limit switch. Now <clears throat> See, th this little red area here displays all the inputs. If I click this switch, that's the X limit, limit switch, or home switch. You see the X appear. If I click this one, the Z appears. See the Z appear right here? If I hit the E stop button, an S appears right there. Now, if you E stop and that one, that wouldn't appear, you know. So... The machine can't move if there's an e-stop pressed. It'll move one pulse. That's all it'll move. So to remove, turn turn the e-stop button and let it out, and the S goes away. See, when I press it, it goes in. When I turn it and let it out, it comes off. All right. <clears throat> so the next, the machine can home in X and Y, and home in Z. But just remember, this isn't absolutely necessary to run the machine. You don't have to home the machine first. You can just start cutting wherever you want when you turn it on. But let's say we want to home it. We go home XY, and it's going to find its limit switches, or its home switches. Home yes. So it homed it, and then it also cleared these numbers up here to zero. And you can do the same home Z. We'll just bring it up a bit first so it doesn't take so long. Home Z. And up it goes. Oh, sorry. I accidentally. Home Z, we'll do it again. All right, so it's homed its X, Y, and Z. Now that, that'd be good if you were running a project and you want to make sure that if you turn, uh, you want to you need may need to restart the job uh the next day or something so after you've set up your part you would have to write down the numbers of the origin the distance from the home you would home it first then you would move to your starting point of your part bring your x and y to the start bring the z down then you'd have to write those numbers down there is another way to do it though with a fixture The machine, the system does support fixtures, so you could define a fixture, a position on the table to, for, to start your work origin, and it can be defined in this table here. So if you want to cut from a different spot, a fixed spot, uh, ever, all the time, let's say you had something mounted over on that corner that you always put a part in, you could use the fixtures, and they are referenced from the home position. All right. That's a little more advanced. Right. 